In this video, I want to talk about how exactly we prepare fatty acids for breakdown. So if we want to take a fatty acid and we want to break it down for energy, how do we do that? Well, before we can begin to actually break it down, we have to activate it. Free fatty acids, which I will abbreviate from now on as FA, they must be activated before being broken down for energy. This is very similar to the idea behind pyruvate before it can go to the Krebs cycle, it needs to be activated into an acetyl-CoA. So it's kind of a similar idea here. So we're going to start off with a fatty acid, which is some carbon chain, right, this arc here. Um, this fatty acid, what we're going to do is invest in ATP and get this intermediate here, this acyl adenylate intermediate, which all we've done here is tacked on an AMP here, and the two, this here is a pyrophosphate hops off, right? So we started off with three, three phosphate groups, and we are, we're left with just one, and that, that, that attaches to this acyl group here, and we have this pyrophosphate knocked off. Now this intermediate, the reason it's in a, it is called an intermediate is because it's used up rather quickly in a following reaction. So the intermediate here is, uh, is added to a coenzyme A, and we yield this thing here, which is an acyl-CoA. So this here, this is an acyl group, and just to kind of give you, just to be clear about that, if you see this, right, this, this portion here, that is an acyl group, right? So here we have an acyl adenylate, right? And here we have an acyl CoA. And of course, the AMP hops off once we add the coenzyme A. So the overall reaction here, the overall reaction is that we take a fatty acid, and we add an ATP and a coenzyme A, and then we form this thing here, which I've mentioned is an acyl CoA, which is essentially the activated fatty acid. It's very, very similar to the whole pyruvate dehydrogenase step in which we take a pyruvate and turn it into an acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA is activated for the Krebs cycle. Now, this this acyl CoA is essentially an activated fatty acid. It's ready to be broken down. It's ready to be broken down specifically via beta oxidation in the mitochondrial matrix. So, beta oxidation is the degradation process, right, for fatty acids. So, we're going to be breaking down this acyl CoA, which is essentially this fatty acid. So what's important to recognize here, first and foremost, this enzyme that catalyzes this step is called an acyl-CoA synthetase. And the reason I'm writing it over this arrow is because this is the overall reaction here. Right? These first two steps are sort of um, part of one, the overall process. Okay? So this is an acyl-CoA synthetase, which makes sense. Right? We're making an acyl-CoA. We're making that activated fatty acid. That's what we're doing. It's also important to recognize that this here, this pyrophosphate, right, the fact that we went from an ATP, right, to an AMP, or just if you look in the overall reaction, we started off with an ATP, we ended up with an AMP, we used two high energy phosphate bonds because this, this pyrophosphate ends up being hydrolyzed into two phosphates. So this is basically what happens here is that we're, this is the equivalent, right, of using two ATPs. So if we're, if, we're, if we're going from an ATP to an AMP, we knocked off two phosphates. Since we knocked off two phosphates, that's two high energy phosphate bonds. So two high energy phosphate bonds, right? That's the equivalent of two ATPs. So activating a fatty acid for breakdown, right, the beta oxidation that we just mentioned, which we'll talk about in the next video, Activation costs 2 ATP. And that's an important thing to keep in mind when calculating the overall energy yield of a fatty acid of a particular length. Thank you for watching. I hope that was a helpful video.